Hello, everyone. Welcome. Um, so, yep, my name is Emil. Um, today, our talk is going to be about life outside the chocolate factory. And for the purposes of today's talk, I am the ex Google therapist. Yeah, and hello, everyone. My name is Murli. Uh, I am the ex Googler, or Zoogler, as we are sometimes referred to. Um, I spent about 11 or 12 years at Google, uh, and I'm now working at not Google, and that has led to some interesting conversations, which are mostly hilarious for Emil. Um, um, so for those of you um, who haven't run into a Zoogler or an ex Googler or whatever, the nickname that a lot of them have for Google is the Chocolate Factory, right? It's the place with the everlasting I can't remember the name gobstopper. The everlasting, everlasting gobstopper. gobstopper. I tried to research for this talk watching Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Um, and so for them, right, it's like they're in this magical factory with like all this magical tooling and whatnot. Um, and I think when they go out and leave afterwards, the reality is slightly different. And having a couple of these friends, I feel like I've had to sort of play that role of like, it's OK. It's OK. And so for today's talk, I thought we'd showcase maybe a little bit like um, the experience of the conversations for me, because they make for a really good laugh. Uh, before we keep going, though, um, I want to make a bit of a disclaimer. Um, Marilee and I both really like our jobs. Um, <laughs> pays for dinner. And so none of what we're saying is about the current jobs we work at, right? This is all an amalgamation of different stories from people in the audience and so on and so forth to give the story you're going to see today. Um, so without further ado, uh, Marilee, welcome to the session. Why don't you tell me how you're doing? Yeah, so, so new job. It's, it's, it's going all right. Um, working for a company, you may have heard of it. We'll, we'll get there in a second. Um, and yeah, so I just I started my onboarding last week. So they sent me my laptop, and it's kind of like the first day of school, right? We sit down with our laptops, and we, and we mess around, and we, it's like, OK, let's follow some instructions. And my manager, who's, who's in California, because of course he is, is like, yeah, here's the doc. Um, here's here's how, you, how you get the source code for, for Juicero Squeezer. Um, see, if, see if you can get away with that. I'll be online, you know, six or seven o'clock your time. See, see how you're doing in the meantime. I'm like, all right, fine. How hard can this be? Um, OK, so what do we do? We make a directory. We rah, rah, get clone. Uh, clone, 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 clone. Uh, well, that's annoying. OK. Um, rah, does the repository? Uh, no, nope, the repo doesn't exist. That's interesting. Let me go check the doc again. No, literally, the first thing in the doc is git clone blah. Ah, oh, that's quite a long doc. <laughs> it's a very long doc. All right. Oh, there's a note. Oh, there's a note down the bottom. Oh, OK. So apparently, my account is not ready, as I was told. I need to file a ticket and do a thing. The thing that really gets me there is that smiley face. It's like, really? <laughs> really? <sighs> All right, so there's no one else around in European hours um, for me to complain at. So I'll file the ticket, and I guess I'll, I'll just hang around and wait. Um, I mean, there are some devs in, in European hours, but IT apparently only work US hours. So maybe, maybe tomorrow I'll be able to, able to make, some, <laughs> make some codes. Um, all right, let's try again. Um, blah, 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 get clone. Ooh, 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 success, maybe. Hooray, great success. All right, CD, blah, 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 set up the thing. Da, 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 set up the repo, da, 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 da. Why am I wasting my time with this? Like, this is not a good use of any, like, I, 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 yeah. <laughs> OK, OK, hold up for a moment. <laughs> I understand you have problems with Docker, and you think the technology might not quite be there, but I think what you're really probably sort of like the anger you're feeling, it's not about that. It's, I think it, you're, you want to be excited, right? You come in with all this excitement and energy, you want to get going right away. And your experience is just not landing. So I don't know if it's the technology that you're quite missing from Google. I, I trust your judgment mostly. Um, let's, let's, try, let's try another thing. Cause, cause <laughs> mostly, we have, mostly, OK. We have, we have more stories. Um, the slides, by the way, all a meal just on the subject of judgment. Um, OK, so I can, I can build the thing now. Like, we, we got a Docker installed and whatever. Let me, let me try and run the thing. OK, blah, 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 blah. Starting the enabling. Oh, well, huh. 
Clearly, no one has ever looked at this log message. I feel like fixing a typo. This, this shouldn't be that hard, right? OK, let me see if I can go and find the source code. Um, finding the source code, GitHub have a code search thing now. This is pretty cool. Um, all right, blah, 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 blah. Oh, yep, OK. Change typo. Happy days. Uh, make, a, make a draft PR. Everything's passed. Set up passed. Build's passed. Excellent. Let's make a real PR. All right. Wait, what? But, but why would you do that? <laughs> Error code four. This is excellent. This is super, super helpful. Uh, all right, let me look at the make file. Yes, yes, the make file. It's a long make file. Zoom in a bit. Zoom in a bit more. Da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. Docker build, blah, 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 blah. Make sure to. What? So to build thing on my desktop using Docker or laptop using Docker, I need to download a random file from AWS. I, I, I. <laughs> right, AWS, blah, 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 blah. access denied. Oh, okay. I'll file another ticket with IT then, shall I? Yeah, I think I'm just going to play with my daughter for the afternoon because I don't think I'm going to get much more work done today. Yay, remote work. Oh, let's try again. Hooray, it works. Da 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 da, git push, blah 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 blah. Oh, oh, and the test failed. Oh, yes, of course. You need to have something that matches a regex that looks vaguely like a Jira ticket number for the PR test to pass. Right. Yep, OK, everything passes. Hurra <sighs> okay, I got, OK, I got nothing. Listen, listen. I, I understand your feelings, and maybe these slides went a little too far for you. Um, but I'm still not convinced it's the technology that's what's really getting under your skin here. What you're really sort of feeling is it's like you're constantly not sure why it's breaking. Right? I feel like that's more of what's happening here. I mean, I'm more angry about it breaking at all, but I will, <laughs> I will take you, uh, all right, may, maybe. It's not the technology. It's not the technology. Maybe, maybe. All right. <laughs> so now we own a thing. I fixed a DNS bug, and now I own DNS. <laughs> all right. This was too much fun, I'm sorry. Yeah, <laughs> as, you, as you can tell, like, there's a reason our slides weren't ready until an hour ago. Um, yeah, so now, OK, so I own DNS. I need to create a Jira component. I'm sorry, for I'm, I'm going to have to stop you here. We're actually at time. Um, so why don't you come back next week? And uh, do you take credit card? Do you want to, can you pay me with credit card or an invoice? So, so I'm not going to use Wave then? Does no. Wave not work? No, right. I'm sorry. Okay, fair enough. Um, yeah, I guess so. Go on then. Yeah. And this is kind of how all our conversations end. Raleigh comes to me, um, feeling his life feelings, and I'm like, okay, no, you need to go now by the third time after your problems. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right, so let's do some audience participation. How many people currently work at, um, at a quote unquote big tech, right? It doesn't have to be one of this list, but someone where you think would fit into the like you would get institutionalized. <laughs> <laughs> like few Not that thing, way. <laughs> which is actually a good because one time once was SR Econ would be like fucking everyone. All right. Yeah, yeah. Um, what about people who used to work at such a place? Oh, that's more people. Okay. Yeah. Yep. 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 Of those people, those the second group of people. How how many how many felt like a bit of sympathetic? Just how many people? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. Um, OK, so let's do a bit of actual proper, proper who are we. Um, so my name is Murali. I spent 12 years at Google. I started as a network engineer, actually, not an SRE, uh, a long time ago. And then over time, did, did various SRE things in, in networking and storage and whatever. Uh, I've been at Snowflake since February. Uh, the Snowflake lawyers would like me to say I'm not speaking on behalf of Snowflake. Um, Ignore but, the shirt. Yeah, Ignore yeah, yeah, it's, it's not fine. there. Um, and, and, Question mark, question mark, question mark. Like, it kind of did. Like, this was literally, like, 
every time we would chat about stuff, Emil would be like, this, this would be comedy gold. And so eventually we decided, OK, let's, let's have a crack at it. Yeah. Why not sh showcase Morelia's suffering? Yeah. Um, so for me, I'm Emil. I never worked at Google, which I never thought I'd put on a resume. But if you like an S or Recon, that's like, a, I haven't worked at Google. Um, I work at Wave Mobile Money. Previously, I worked at Shopify and DigitalOcean, but never sort of the size of companies where I feel like I get the same feelings that you've experienced. But talking with a bunch of people at SRECon and so forth, it really is at times this kind of like, no, 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 it's OK. It's OK. It's OK. Like, take a breath. All right, let's talk about these sort of feelings you're feeling. And I think it originally starts with this idea of like, um, of like the needing the technology, right? But I think it goes on. It's, it's deeper than that. Yeah. So we went, we went through a few somewhat fake examples, right? But what would, what would like a less soul-destroying version of, of, these, of these stories look like? Onboarding, right? So you're presumably, most people here work for some flavor of technology company, right? And so for hiring at least, uh, we say engineer, but actually it's really any employee who has like a well-defined job function. They join the company. You ship them a laptop, ideally before they, before they start, because we're in the post-COVID, everyone starts remotely world. They open it up, they get some credentials. Maybe they enroll a, a two-factor device, and then they have a bunch of instructions to follow, right? Their, their manager, their mentor, their, you know, the company central onboarding, there's a list of things you have to do. If ever I run into an error when, like, in that first week, I'm just going through the instructions and I run into an error where I have to do something the docs didn't tell me to do, it, it's just, like, why? It's so frustrating, and it really shouldn't be that hard. I mean, if you're a five-person company, that's a one thing. But once you're above the point where you have enough of an IT team that you're shipping people's laptops ahead of time, it's not that much more effort to make their like, first few days experience like, important. Because, you know, as, as Emil said, there's enthusiasm. Like, either there's enthusiasm because, hey, this is a new job and fun, or there's like, stress because, hey, this is a new job, don't screw it up. Or, you know, but people are motivated, right? And you don't want to waste that on, oh, I have an AWS permissions error. Right. Um, so the other sort of big one that came up again and again when talking to different people was this idea of sort of how things fail. I think oftentimes when you start a new company, you always assume it's you, right? Like, oh, I wrote something wrong. I didn't do this right thing. But what you end up struggling with is kind of figuring out, like, okay, what is that delta, right? Because everyone's machine, if you go from the previous slide, has been, like, custom built to do their own thing over time. So you're like, where is the error? And I think something that's come up repeatedly, and even for me every now and again, too, has been this idea of, like, what failed? And we try to sort of be like, oh, no, no, don't worry about it. It's just like a little broken, rather than being like, this is exactly where it exploded. Um, and so like the big one I feel usually when you do start a new company is, is I am, right? It is permissions. And one thing that we also talked about quite a bit is you'll often find like there's almost like security by obscurity, by, by like internally in a company, where you don't really know what permissions your coworkers have that allows them to do the same task you should be able to do. And you're constantly like fighting of like, where do I need to find this? And then you find out that there's more than one IAM provider and whatnot. Um, so yeah, so the other one, big one I think we think that could sort of like be like the resolution to this is like really focusing on the transparency of just like, how are these things working and what do your coworkers have in that moment? Um, so CICD, uh, this is the how do I build and ship software thing, right? Um, I think at this point, for anyone starting like a new company, I think it's probably relatively uncontroversial that everyone's going to say, you know what, even day zero, just do CICD. Like, it's so cheap to set up whatever, Travis Jenkins Semaphore plus GitHub. Like, most people will just do it. Um, it may seem like a bit more effort than you're willing to go to when you're one to five engineers, but like, it is really that cheap, and it will save you so much effort later on. If you say, the way that we build and test software is that you make a draft PR, and that always works, you eliminate a huge amount of variation with, like, oh, this person runs ZSH, or this person is a Slackware user, or whatever, right? Like, it just it eliminates all of this, this nonsense. Um, but it kind of goes beyond that. It's the, the thing of the way we have one way to, to like, test and build software, genericize this to, we have one way to do x for all x. Like, there is huge amounts of value in deciding early on, like, there's a bunch of problems which you're going to have to solve either once or multiple times, right? If you say you let every team build their own, 
logging solution or running tests or deploying to production, yes, that gives them individual velocity, but over time, that gives you like onboarding friction and cost, right? What if you reorg things where suddenly a service that was run by team A is now run by team B because team A no longer exists because their, their VP got fired or whatever, right? And suddenly team B have to learn twice as many stacks or whatever. There is massive, massive value in just having that single uniformity. Uh, as an example at Snowflake, the answer to 90% of questions of where is X is it's in Snowhouse. Snowhouse is Snowflake, uh, sorry, for those who don't know, Snowflake are a cloud data warehouse. This is not a sales pitch, I'm just contextualizing. Um, Snowflake are type SQL, do big data, right? Um, the answer to where is X, whether that's billing from our cloud providers, whether that's debug logs, whether that's like uh, a useful copy of the data that's in Workday that you can actually query, the answer is it's in Snowhouse, run a SQL query. And it's a bit weird because sometimes people are like, how do I do a rollout? Oh, you run this, this uh, system command. I'm like, what? But um, what it means is that you've got this uniform thing that everyone knows how to use. And so the only thing you need to tell them is, this is the table you care about. And that's super, super, super powerful, right? The, the, the lowering the barrier to entry to enabling people to do more um, using kind of a standard platform. And, and that is, I think, a thing that is really, really underestimated. Uh, is this me again? Yes. Um, the other thing here is um, organization and um, delegation. So let's say, for example, um, you come in and you're given ownership of a thing. Let's say DNS hypothetically. I'm like, all right. So there's going to be like 10 different classes of DNS buckets, right? There's, there's bad data. There's this doesn't work. There's corrupt zone file. There's I want to be able to push this quicker, right? There's different classes of thing. And I would like to be able to shovel them off into different buckets because they just for metrics and automation and whatever else. And so Jira is the thing. And I've literally, my first experience with Jira was, was eight months ago. And it's, it's been interesting. Um, it's, and so okay. I, it's okay. It's yeah. okay. It'll be okay. So things I've learned. And, and to be clear, um, the problem I'm, I'm expressing, I don't think is a Jira problem, to, to Emil's point. I think it's a business process problem. Um, I'm sure Jira has many problems, but like <laughs> this particular thing, um, Jira has this concept of a project. And within a project, you have a project admin, and the project admin can do stuff, right? Create new components and create templates and whatever. Um, in the case of Snowflake, Snowflake have decided there will be one project for the entire company because it makes it easy to do cross-team dependency. Like There are good reasons to do that, but it has some downsides because it means if I want to be able to create a component for my DNS thing, I need to go and talk to the like five TPMs in the company who have admin permissions over our project. And that means that changing the way that I work, if, if, if like Jira is the way that we plan our work, changing the way that I work on my little thing that has been delegated to me means a round trip to Pacific time and back. And like, that's just kind of a pain. Um, so your tooling really should try and minimize um, your tooling, your processes, everything. Just minimize round trips and roadblocks and interrupts. Right? If you're going to delegate to people, actually delegate to them and don't get in their way. Um, your code reflects your organization, and your organization reflects Jira right? or whatever, whatever productivity tool and suite you use. So be aware of the limitations you're encoding in whatever kind of administrative choices you make in Jira or Notion or whatever these other bazillion things you use. And then uh, finally, I think the thing we kept talking about while developing this talk and also just through our general chats has been kind of this idea that as companies, when we're building products or services, we often, like, it's obvious to care about the user experience of what we're selling or what we're building. But as SREs, I think we forget that what we're building internally is often has its own user experience for our like, fellow employees. And so, if you're going to take anything away from this talk, I think the big one is to think about the UX that your work is, it has, right? Um, and I think the other one, too, to sort of highlight a big point that we talked about um, as we're developing this talk is the reason so many of these, like, X large company employees feel like it's a technology problem is because they have experienced the like final stage of like optimizing this process, right? It's like the developer environment might be fully automated, but you don't need a fully automated developer environment if you want to like have a good first day process, right? Like the two things are separated, um, and so you can get sort of like those similar experiences, that golden path, the chocolate factory energy. Um, and then I guess, of course, like Marilee insisted, delete Jira. Hey. Just delete the box. <laughs>
Yes. <laughs> Mostly trust Emil. <laughs> Thanks. All right.